Leon, it's been six hours since our last transmission. I was starting to get worried. Don't you mean lonely? Anyway, I started to feel dizzy, and then I guess I must have lost consciousness. Lost consciousness? Maybe that has some connection to what the village chief was talking about. Hmm. Can't say. But I'm all right now. I'm going to continue my mission. Oh, hon again. I love our little conversations. <clears throat> Excuse me. So hello everybody, welcome back to Dude Long Couch's Let's Play of Resident Evil 4 Ultimate HD Edition. I had to take a couple days off there because work was crazy and I was busy. But now I'm back and you should expect a good number of updates over the next couple days. I see a document on the bed, let's check it out. Anonymous letter. There's an important item hidden in the falls. If you are able to get it, you might be able to get Ashley out of the church. But I'll warn you, the route to the church isn't a walk in the park by any means. They've deployed what's called an El Gigante, so God bless. I don't know if I pronounced that exactly right, but who cares. About what's been going on in your body. If I could help you, I would, but unfortunately, it's beyond my power. Well, screw you, anonymous person. Yeah, I took four years of Spanish in high school, so obviously I'm, like, perfectly fluent. But not really. Alright, so it's nighttime now, which means this game gets 100% scarier and some crazy shit will happen. But before we can move on, we actually have to make a little detour. You see those blue lights off in the horizon there? If you haven't figured it out by now, that's indicative of where the merchant is. And that's uh, a merchant spot that we haven't been to before. So let's hop on the boat and let's go check it out. Just in the interest of being a completionist as I crash right into the wall of the cave. So since this is kind of a boring little side section here, I just want to take a second to talk about, oh I finally got some rifle ammo. I want to talk about all the rifle ammo because it's been so long since I had some. It's been a couple days since I played but I remember that much. Let's load that up. And also, uh, I was watching a couple of my old videos, and I just wanted to make a note that I am absolutely retarded, and I should have been using this giant fish to heal myself when I was using the mixtures. For some reason, I just completely just zoned out on that. Rare things on sale. What are you Let's selling? see. I don't think I actually have anything to buy or sell. I can sell the spinel. That all straight? <laughs> and that... <sighs> Alright, I was wrong. I have a lot of stuff to sell. <laughs> Thank you. But that's it for now. But there's nothing what new to buy. Buying? Don't need the TMP yet. Buying? I will be getting that soon. And there's nothing to tune up. Alright, there's actually a hidden thing up on the roof of this little hut if you push these boxes out of the way. What was I saying? So I just wanted to, to take a minute to just talk about how awesome this game is. If you're watching this, you probably already know. So this game came out, I believe it was in like January of 2005. I mean, it's pretty old at this point. But this game was so influential at the time that it came out. It really kind of took the, the whole third person over the shoulder shooter thing and really brought it into the mainstream. You got the green gem. We can combine that with the elegant mask. So that's that's like the number one reason to come over here is to grab that. And that's everything for up here. But yeah, I guess I have to go back this way. I think a lot of people don't know that, but there are actually interviews out there with Cliff Blazinski, who is the lead designer on Gears of War. I'm a huge Gears of War fan. Gears of War would not exist without this game. That's how influential it was to a lot of developers at the time. The, the general design of this game, like the way the movement works, the way the shooting works, it, it was kind of a... <clears throat> I don't want to say it was a revolution, because that's not what it was. That's, that's stupid. But it was so influential 
in the way that third-person shooting works, it rubbed off on a lot of other games and kind of changed the way that game development works in that genre. Now, a lot of people don't think that it holds up today. By the way, there are some Spinels in some of these torches that are going to be, like, everywhere throughout the game. I don't know exactly where they are. Um, I'll check these ones. Nope. I don't know where they are. I, I, I know that they exist. But I'm not going to kill every torch in the game trying to find it. Hey, buddy. What the fuck? Alright, so that's called a Las Plaga. They are assholes. You have to deal with them the rest of the game. There's multiple different kinds. And they are susceptible to flash grenades. They do not like light. So that's a good reason to hold on to your flash grenades up to this point. Which I haven't been doing. Not that you really get all that many up till now. Holy shit. That dude's got one too. The first Plagas you kill drops 5,000 Pesetas, which is helpful. I'm not going to waste another flash grenade on just one Plagas. I'm just going to snipe this guy. They will usually die if you are good enough to actually hit them. They'll die to one shot from the rifle. Just like that. That's one of the best uses of the rifle in this game. But another reason that I don't like the semi-auto. Because when you suck like I do, and you miss your first shot, it zooms you back out so you can rack the bolt, and then you kind of have to set up your shot all over again. So this rifle's fine if you're like an RE4 master. But anyway, I keep getting distracted. Is there something up here? He has a barrel. Um, a lot of people i found these days are kind of hard on this game because even though it was inspirational to games like Gears of War, it does not control like them. You know, when this originally came out on the GameCube, uh, the GameCube only had one control stick. It, had a, it did have a secondary stick called the C stick. C stood for camera, which is kind of what that stick was intended to be used for, but it wasn't great for aiming in like a first person game, or a third person game for that matter. So the controls worked a little differently. You moved and you aimed with the same stick, but you had to stop and hold down the trigger and then aim so you can't move and shoot at the same time and you can't strafe oh he died already good you can't strafe or do any of that crazy maneuvering shit that you can do in games like Gears of War and a lot of people don't like that these days which I can understand where they're coming from because <clears throat> it does feel kind of strange it's a little different but the way I see it is this game was designed that way it's designed with that in mind, and everything is, is based around that. The way that the enemies move, the way that they surround you, the way the gunplay works. It's, uh, it's, it's just a perfectly designed game, in my opinion. And I, I wouldn't want to play it with Gears of War-style controls, because I think that it would ruin the balance of it. So as you can see, you want to shoot these boxes down so you can jump over the gap here. We're trying to get through that waterfall right back there, which is what that anonymous letter was talking about. But first we have to come over here and take out this switch. Not take it out, just flip it. So it'll stop the waterfall. Some old ass machinery right there. Drop that door, it diverts the water, and now we may proceed. And I believe that there's an item back here. Yep. Money, money, money. I ought to reload. You see these torches are everywhere. And again, there's spinels in some of them. I don't even know how many. It might just be like one or two. So this part, 
as soon as you jump onto that platform there, they start coming from the waterfall and from the other side. So what you want to do is actually jump back here, and you'll force them to funnel this way across all these platforms. And then you can just sit here and pot shot everybody, make them fall off with one shot. And this is similar to that spot in the quarry area where it's kind of a trade-off because you don't get any items but for making them fall into the water like that but you're also taking everybody out with one shot so to me that's worth it just to save yourself the hassle and keep yourself from any potential damage Let's see can I mix that up no that's fine where it is <clears throat> So we're ready to move on. I, I apologize, I have to keep clearing my throat, guys. I, I think I'm having some kind of allergy problem today. You see this shiny thing up here? That's an amber ring. Shoot it down, grab it, sell it for cash. Sell it for cash! Anybody remember that old infomercial? This part always bothers me, with these little cutouts in this pathway. It looks like there should be stuff there, but there's just not. I always feel like I'm missing something. Take the round insignia? Fuck yeah, I'm gonna take that shit. I've obtained an object that resembles a cult group's insignia. Wonderful, Leon. Head back to the church. Ashley's safety is our immediate priority. <laughs> Maybe it's your immediate priority. My immediate priority is not getting my fucking head cut off with a chainsaw. Or any of the other crazy, horrible things that are happening in this place. Ashley can fend for herself. So you hop on the boat and it brings you back to this spot. This is where we were before. Got a selection of good things. What are you selling? Now, at this point, sell the spinel, <laughs> sell the you. amber ring. <laughs> Thank you. And that's it for now. Now, this is what the point where I am going to buy the TMP because I want it for this part coming up. I really should have used that fucking fish earlier. Oh man, do I even have room for this? I could move. I'll just barely be able to squeeze this in. But I don't have room for anything else. Alright, I'll probably be using that fish very soon. And let's tune up the TMP as much as we can. Firepower. Reload speed. I'm actually going to hold off on the capacity for now. I'll explain that later. You don't really need that in the beginning. So the TMP I found is a lot is the source of a lot of controversy on the internet. There's a lot of debate as to whether it's a good gun or a bad gun, whether you should use it, blah blah blah. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's a great gun. I'm gonna end the debate. The TMP is fucking awesome. The problem a lot of people have with it is that they just look at the uh, the firepower. On paper, it's really low. 0 0.5. That's half of your pistol. The pistol that you start with. But look at the firing speed. 0 0.1. That's freaking crazy. If you do the math and look at the, uh, the DPS output of the TMP, it's freaking massive. It is by far the gun of choice for boss fights. Ex except for magnums, which you don't have yet. Holy shit! Yeah. 
Me and her duh. That means shit. This dude's ugly and terrifying. Alright, so this is El Gigante. He is massive and strong and will destroy you very quickly if you're not careful. He, honestly, he's not like overly difficult. I say as I get smashed into the ground. Um, the reload was what really did me in there. But he, he's pretty slow, and you can kind of avoid a lot of his stuff by just slowly backing up. Remember that guy? Hey, it's that dog. It's that dog. I bet you're glad that you saved his ass now, aren't you? Because this dude comes in and hooks you up. Oh god. I just ran in between his legs. So the dog comes in and distracts him. He doesn't distract him like 100%. He'll still come after you after you shoot him. Because who likes being shot, right? Alright. After you shoot him enough times, the Plagus will come out. Reload first. Get that out of the way. Then climb up and knife his ass. Sorry if the button mashing's loud. Can't avoid it. So that pisses him off even more. Oh god. He's picking up a tree. Oh god. Oh god. Whoa! I definitely hit the buttons. Apparently it didn't work for some reason. Can't explain that. But whatever. Alright, let's reload real quick while he's distracted. I am going to try to pick up all these items before they disappear. Hey Poocher, could you go back to distracting him? Please? He's probably right on my ass right now. Oh shit. Alright, at least this time I can see it coming. Oh, actually I took him out before he swung. That's helpful. Alright, if I can hit him enough times, this will do it. I don't think I got him enough times. Shit! Shit. Woohoo! So yeah, every now and then he'll do that charge attack at you. Which you can dodge with a QTE. Hey, don't kick my dog! You motherfucker! Uh, yes, I'm calling because your El Gigante kicked my dog. And I do not appreciate it. Ugh. Oh, I thought I was backing up in time, but I was not. That one's actually not too hard to get out of. He just... Oh, man. <laughs> he was so close to death. Yeah, you just, uh... Swivel the left stick around, and that'll take care of him. Now, he should be dead from that. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And then the way opens for you. Alright. I took a little bit of damage, but all things considered, that wasn't horrible. I don't want to stay at brown, though. Let's use a white egg. Bring me up to green. He drops, what is it, 15,000 pesetas? Not too bad. And I picked up a yellow herb. I think that's it for the items around here. And let's move this over yonder. Move you up there. And move you down here. That's good for now.
asshole. Can't believe you kicked my dog. It's messed up. And by the way, I'm pretty sure that's the last time you ever see the dog. He's just gone after this. I wish he would come back. I wish there was a secret cutscene at the end where Leon, like, became best friends with the dog. And I wish he was, like, part of the Resident Evil mythology from here on out. But he's not. Oh, I don't want to use the TMP anymore. Not right now. Try to save up the ammo. Also, I should not have reloaded it. The reason that I didn't upgrade the clip capacity earlier is because if you upgrade that when your weapon is empty, it will actually refill the ammo for you. And you get free ammo from it. Which, for something like the pistol or the shotgun, isn't a huge deal. But for a gun that has uh, kind of limited ammo, like the TMP or a Magnum, it's super helpful. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that up there on YouTube. There's like a zombie dog waiting to devour my face. I'm going to pot shot him before I actually move up there and trigger him. Yeah, you can definitely see him now. Look how terrifying that fucker looks. Get shot in the face. Missed. I figured that was going to happen. Did you just dodge a shotgun? Better knock that shit off. And he drops TMP ammo. Now there's like two more up here, I think. Yep. Okay, let's see if I can pull this off. I'm probably gonna... This is gonna backfire. This is the enemy that I was talking about earlier that is vulnerable to uh, incendiary grenades. So I'm gonna try and catch them both with it. Did he dodge it? I couldn't see what happened. Did he... It looked like he kind of jumped out of the way. Or did he just roll over? Yeah, he rolled over dead. Okay, good. That's okay. Now we have the insignia key. Or the round insignia, rather. Let's throw it in there. And we enter the church. Some crazy shit going on in this place. This insignia is everywhere. I wonder if it's a religion from this region. Well, it seems like a pretty safe bet, Leon. I ain't no religion expert or nothing. Come over here and grab another flash grenade. At this, this is the point in the game where flash grenades actually become really helpful. And you want to try to always keep one or two of them on tap. Just so you can kill the Plogus when they come out. They're not like super plentiful. Well, at some points in the game, they start to be plentiful. This early on, you shouldn't encounter too many of them. But it's the kind of thing where, even if just one comes out at the wrong time, it can really cause you issues. There's another Sadler poster. These cultists are like... like teenagers hanging posters of Justin Bieber on their wall. They just got posters of Sadler everywhere. Just can't get enough of the dude. What am I doing here? Alright, we gotta solve this puzzle here. Which color light will you operate? So basically you've gotta mix these so that when you combine them it'll uh, fit the pattern that's in the center there. It's pretty simple. You just the easiest way to, to figure this out is to just look at the edges of the circle and compare them to the color that you're working with. I didn't want green, I want blue. What the fuck? Red, green. Oh, I'm retarded. Okay. And this one, uh, I think I went past it. Yeah, that should be it. Now we'll combine them. Boom! Yeah, for some reason, uh, I kept selecting blue and I thought that it was putting me on green because I was just staring straight at the spot where the text was, which is right where the green one was. I'm an idiot. Ashley. Don't come! Hey, take it easy. 
down. Everything's going to be just fine. My name's Leon. I'm under the president's order to rescue you. What? My father? That's right. And I have to get you out of here. Now come with me. It's Leon. I've succeeded in extricating my subject. Good work, Leon. I'll send a chopper over right away. Where's the extraction point? There's another trail that you can take to get out of the village. The chopper will pick you up beyond there. Got it. I'm on my way. Plane Manual 3. Uh, this is just telling you how to control Ashley. You use the right bumper on the 360 pad to tell her to wait or follow. Sometimes you can do special things with her. Not like that, you sickos. Ashley has her own health. If she gets carried away or gets killed, the game is over and you fail. All right, that's probably a good spot to end right now. We have Ashley. We're going to get her the fuck out of here or die trying. I want to say thank you very much for watching. Please check me out on GronusGamers.com, and I'll catch you all next time.